So to start off this video, I'm using a hand plane to plane down some rough crotch uh, cherry slabs. And to start off this video, there's a little bit of a backstory, so this is going to be slightly different than some of my other videos. Um, the original plan for these is because my brother is getting married, and their wedding doesn't necessarily have a theme, but the vibe is kind of rustic. So him and his fiance asked me if I could, um, if I had any rough lumber laying around that th they could display their, they're not having a wedding cake, they're having macaroons. So I had these two cherry slabs that someone had given me and instead of just finishing them for the wedding and then I'm um, assuming having them returned, I decided to finish them completely and turn it into a coffee table. So they live in DC and their space is a little limited because apartments are not huge. So the design of this is based on, on trying to get ample storage out of it using these two slabs that will also be used in their wedding, as well as uh, keeping the design somewhat unique, a little bit modern, but not too modern. So the beginning of this process, and I've just started using these electric handheld planes, and they're awesome, was just taking down the bulk of the, the rough sawn lumber off of both sides of these cherry crotches. And then I was kind of playing around with the lumber, seeing how it looked. It's best if um, I had a, a rough design in my head, but you always kind of want to look and see how things will, will work together. And then um, I took a draw knife and just started cleaning up the edges of these slabs. I, I clean up these slabs somewhat slowly. I, I left them fairly rough and then I would go back later and, and finish sand them. But in order to kind of start, start building, I wanted to have the bulk of that stuff off of them. Now I'm also going to be incorporating this live edge walnut slab that someone gave me into this table as well. There was a crack already down the middle of it, so I'm going to be using the figured sections of that walnut as well. Um, now this table is going to have a top shelf and a bottom shelf because there's two cherry slabs, so I'm going to cantilever the top shelf and I had this pallet wood laying around that is actually really thick maple that has some checks and cracks in it but won't hurt the structural integrity of the piece so to start building the frame for that I just planed down this maple I didn't have any final dimensions in mind I wanted to keep them as thick as possible because the cantilever is going to have to hold up a fair amount of weight so I pretty much just planed them down until they were they were fairly square and then I ripped one piece in half. And these are going to be the two bottom legs. I think these pieces ended up being about two inches wide by about three inches thick. So you can see how that bottom slab is going to rest on that maple. And I'm going to have to have it angled because it's, I want it to fit underneath the two arms of that crotch as much as possible for support. So these backs are going to have to be angled and I'm going to be dovetailing them to the vertical slabs. So you can see I had that slab in place so I could get the angle I needed. And then I could transfer my marks to the top and the bottom of the pieces and then transfer that angle to the back so that when I flip it on my table saw I always have a reference and then I just drew a rough dovetail on there I think these ended up being about 10 degrees and you could see I could line it up with my cut and I'd have to change the height because it's angled for both cuts but this was pretty easy cutting dovetails dovetails with um, this tenoning jig I have is is pretty simple in my in my shop so that was the first one and the second one the same process like all I had to do once I had that that angle was you could see gauge the height and then and then cut those two edges flip it and my marks are on the back as well so it was easy to flip it and still have a reference reference line there and then um, I scored these pieces and then I just hand sawed out the waist and the hand sawing on this is a little frustrating because um, the saw I have is a good saw but it's missing a bunch of teeth because I threw it so um, a, a nicer saw would be ideal for for finishing up that joint and now these are going to be the two verticals and it was the same process I didn't have final dimensions in mind I was pretty much just using a big piece of that slab so I think these ended up being about an inch and a half thick by two inches wide. 
So I have center on my bottom piece, center on my vertical piece, and I could trace the underneath of it for that dovetail. You could see I'm going up the thickness of that piece. So for these, the easiest way for me to do this because these dovetails are so long was to hand saw out my two reference marks and um, so that I had my two edge marks there. So I could do the first one as well as the second one. And like I said before, because of this, this saw being a little crooked, my lines weren't perfect. But I was able to follow that mark pretty well. You can see on this one, I'll have to hold the backside of the blade in order to keep that line true but um, this was pretty quick work. This is actually pretty nice maple for it being pallid wood. It, 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 stain, uh, it finished quite well. And once I had that, I could go through and chisel out the, the inner waist. So I'm just making a rough mark on the back and I could cut up um, from the front there and I'm doing the one side that is narrower and then once I get a little bit far down on this one side I will flip it and finish it off just if you could you could do one side but sometimes it tears out on the back edge if you if you chisel all the way down on one side so you can see I'm flipping it and then doing the exact same thing um, on the back side and it's easier to do most of the chisel work where you have a wider portion of of that dovetail so that that you don't um, get the wood kind of jammed in the joint and then that's just kind of the finished view so this is a nice gonna be a nice um, solid connection because the, the the joint is quite large and then it just slides nicely into place like that and that is how my two verticals are going to work so I always clean up these joints a little bit after I have them cut. They're not perfect right out the bat, but it did fit. And then I will clean it up a little bit. So then this is going to be the material for the top cantilevered arms. Same material, that pallet maple wood. I'm once again splitting this in half. So I have two sections. And I believe these top pieces were a little over an inch thick by um, a little over two inches wide. So I got those two pieces and I'm going to be doing the exact same thing to the top with dovetails. I'm using an inch and a half thick spacer there in order to get my mark because these will also have to be um, cut on an angle. So this is kind of a rinse and repeat process for the top as well. You can see I have the angled sections. Once again, the probably I think it was a 10 degree dovetail and then I could just cut these real quickly with my tenoning jig. The second one was a little bit of a steeper angle so I had to change the height on both sides and then you could see using using my leg there I could prop this up and make my marks and then do the exact same thing. I don't think I filmed this the second time around because it is the exact same process cutting out the the leftover pieces with the chisel, transferring my marks so that I have nice solid marks for using the saw. And then this is that being dry fit in place. The nice thing about the dovetails are it's a super strong joint, but they also don't um, won't torque as much as other joints. So you can see to get a nice tight fit, it's a little bit of a process of fitting and removing and sanding and then and then everything went together and I could test fit that slab on top just kind of lining everything up these will also be trimmed at the end I kept everything long so even without any glue in place you could see how nicely the that uh, holds itself together so then just as a little added extra support I'm gonna be putting instead of putting a 45 at the top I decided to turn it into more of a decorative element so this is a piece of decking it's um, an exotic lumber that that finishes really well so I'm just making making a shape out of it and then I'm gonna I cut the shape first because it was easier to cut the shape and then split this in half so I have two so you can see I'm just sending it through my table saw slowly because this lumber splinters a lot so I sent it through slowly and then I had just had to finish cutting it in half with with my hand saw then once I had my two pieces I could clean those up so in order to attach that, I'm putting a dado through the center of my two verticals. 
believe my finished piece was about a half inch thick. So there's that data you could see I could slide it into place. And then I'm going to chisel out a piece on the top and the bottom, the bottom feet, as well as the top arms. And then this will be a very, very strong joint. If you could see, I just had marked this in place and I could go through and chisel it out. And I don't film a ton of this. It wasn't a long process, but it did take a little bit of time since this is maple. I make that first perimeter mark so that none of the wood splinters out and then I could go through and start chiseling out that material. And then it fit nicely in place without any gaps or anything. So then I could slide the dovetail vertical in place, make sure everything was, was square, checking for square because if this vertical isn't square then your table um, won't be level on top. I could hammer the top portion on top of this and then mark for the top as well and chisel out the excess so that this will then sit flush. I didn't film that because it's this was the same as the bottom. You can slide everything in place. You can see the groove I have there. And then um, this was a real nice tight fit. And then it really sh uh, made the whole thing really sturdy, which I liked. It's probably not sturdy enough to sit on, but it, you won't have to worry about it sagging over time. So on the angled pieces, I showed it really quick. That, that vertical arch I had to trim a little bit because it doesn't sit flat in there. It sits angled to so the backside is, is trimmed slightly. And then this is all off camera. I thought it was in frame and it's not. I'm just adding glue to everything and I'm, I'm gluing up these pieces. So then I'm clamping this in place. So then I'm just clamping this and then I measured and leveled this and I put a plywood spacer there so that as this dries, that top arm can't sag. So the next day, everything was dry. I came in and I had to trim those dovetails because I made them wide. And then um, I'm using a piece of plywood on the back to kind of keep everything flat because this portion will have a backer. So once that was lined up, you could see how that slab's gonna sit in place. I'm gonna be adding some cross members in here to sure up the piece a little bit. So I have, it's gonna have to be angled because I'm trying to avoid the crotch as, crotch as much as possible. So I have this marked and this is just a scrap piece of oak. And then I'm gonna be making this a little bit higher than the piece so that the whole table is floating on top of these cross members. I just really like the way that that looks on, on finished furniture. So once again, in order to cut these dados, everything had to be in an angle. Um, it wasn't a ton of math. I just placed this on the table and then I could gauge just from afar the angle I needed and I had to use a spacer because this isn't doesn't sit perfectly flat but then I could just creep up on these dado cuts. They're about three quarters of an inch and I kept my pieces of oak long so that I could go back and trim them to get a perfect fit. You could see how much I have to take off in order to get them to fit into place. That's how that will look. And I'll, I'll end up um, smoothing out the, I don't leave the corner sharp. I end up rounding them over, but I don't think I film that. So then I could clamp this in place and do the exact same thing for the top with it clamped in place. I could kind of mark where I want them. Like I said, I'm trying to avoid having them stick out past the crotch so you don't have to see them. And then it was the exact same process for the top. For the top, I ended up using um, a, some scrap maple because I had it laying around. The oak you won't really see, so it'll be hidden. The scrap maple you'll see a little bit, so I'd, I wanted it to match. Once again, I have these in place, so I could, I could line them up on top and then just mark the angle I need for these. So then that, that is how those slide into place, and you can see how they're a little bit higher so that, that the tops will float on them. And this is just testing out that top. It's hard to tell from here, here that there, there is a space there. So then I could glue everything together, um, the two pieces together, because these would have to be glued together to kind of finish the process. Sometimes I like to keep everything um, dry fitted because I could go back and make changes easier. But th at this point, this kind of had to be glued together in order to finish the piece. So you could see I'm just clamping, putting um, glue in all those dado joints and just clamping everything together. And I would let this set overnight. And this is just what that, that frame, finished frame looks like. 